Now we're going to take a more in-depth look at some of the options you have for using Photoshop plugins. Now there are a lot of different options available out there. Some are free, the best ones are not. So let's take a look at some of the different Photoshop plugins. Now this website is one that you saw previously and you accessed it through the filter menu. If you go filter, browse filters online, it opens up the Adobe add-ons website. And you can see here, you select Photoshop because you can get add-ons for a lot of different applications. So in selecting Photoshop, then you can see all of the different options, what their prices are, etc. Now additionally, if you go online, you can do a search, just like I did here, and you will get several different types of plugins that pop up. Now, some of the better known plugins include Alien Skin. And Alien Skin creates plugin software that works within Photoshop. And some of the things that you can do with various types of sof software are you can do noise reduction or you can go in and do painting effects or HDR effects or you can adjust your exposure or you can resize a super small image up to billboard size. Those are the types of things that you can use plugins for. In addition to retouching or doing different types of black and white conversions, etc. So Alien Skin is definitely one that's worth taking a look at. Another good option is Topaz software. This plugs into Photoshop and you can get a variety of different effects. There's clarity, glow, impression, adjust, remask, which does masking. You can imagine if that tree were to have to be selected using the pen tool, how long that would take. Special lens effects, stylization, black and white. Topaz has actually 16 different plugins and they're very powerful and a lot of fun. You can buy them individually or you can buy the whole set. However, it is pretty expensive to do so at $469. Redynamics is an HDR image emulator and HDR is high dynamic range and usually that effect is created using multiple images. However, Redynamics does the effect using a single image. Portraiture is a facial retouching software or a people portrait retouching software and I will be able to demonstrate this one to you. I have it on my machine. Knockout software is another masking software and the Google Nick collection is very similar to the Topaz collection in that it has several different options and I will be able to demonstrate those to you as well. Now to install a plugin on a Mac, what you have to do is download it or copy it from the installer disk in which you received it or wherever it's saved on the computer into the plugins folder within Adobe Photoshop. On a PC, you will just double click on the .exe file and that will install it on your machine. Now within Photoshop to access your plugins once they're installed, what you'll have to do is you'll access them through the filter menu. And as you can see, I've got Anthropics Portraiture Pro installed and the Nick Collection installed on my machine. However, they're showing grayed out because I don't have a pixel based layer selected for them to work with. So if I select my copy of my background layer, and then go to my filter menu, you can see where each of these are now available. Now, Nick Collection has several different options. I'm going to just demonstrate a couple. I am going to demonstrate Color Effects Pro and Silver Effects Pro. 
So for this image, we're going to look at Silver FX Pro, and that's the black and white conversion plugin for Google NIC filters. Takes it a minute to load, and you can see that you have several different categories over here on the left that are available. You can select all, and then you can just go through and you can look at presets, which are almost like little recipes, preset settings for the sliders over here on the right that you can go and select for your image. Now this isn't a very good quality image. We're seeing some banding happening up here in the sky, but we can get the general idea. What you can do is you can go through and you can add control points that selectively apply the color. So if I come in I can add color to just individual parts of the area. And I can copy those control points either by duplicating it down here. So we see another one was created, etc. Or I could just choose to maybe add color back in down here on the ground and have that fade. And so you can go in and individually brighten up certain parts of the image, etc. using the control points we can see that this area right here is a little dark. I would maybe want to narrow, but once I've narrowed the size, I can brighten that up. Duplicate that, maybe come over here and brighten up this corner now. Duplicate that, and maybe come see what we can do over here. So you can see where you can do a lot. It's not just black and white, it's selective color. I can adjust the contrast, I can adjust the brightness, you can see your histogram, your color filters, everything else. You can create custom presets, you can import presets, you can compare side by side for your adjustments, zoom in, etc. Cancel out of that. <coughs> and switch to a different image. Make sure I have pixel based layer selected. Go to filter. Come down to Nick Collection and we'll look at the Color Effects Pro plugin. And so I'm going to select all. And over here on the left you can see all of the different variety of options we have in this plugin. So these are all different filters. So the first one's black and white. Then I have a bicolor, another one, something they call bleach bypass. So I'm going to change my view to entire image, but I can do the side by side or have them before and after as well individually shown, but we'll do the individual large image. So once again, black and white, bicolor, bicolor user defined, bleach bypass, brilliance and warmth, classical soft focus, color stylizer. And you can go through and you can adjust each of these to your own personal preference using the sliders over to the right. Detail extractor, dynamic skin softener, film effects, several of those, and film grain, a fog, foliage, glamour glow, high key, so a whole lot of different options in the different filters. There's categories up here at the top to help narrow them down for you. And depending on which filter you select, you can come over to the right and make adjustments. You can add control points and selectively apply the filter to different parts of the image. You can load recipes and use different recipes. Sometimes recipes involve multiple filters being used instead of just one or two. And then you can look at your history 
and maybe you want to go back to a setting that you had and you thought you messed it up so you can revert back there as well I'm going to cancel out of that and that's the Google Nick filters there are several others there's analog effects pro and pro 2 define 2 which is noise reduction HDR effects so if we look at the HDR effects with this image, it loads, again, our categories are to the left, our panel sliders will be on the right. And so you can go through and you can select different categories and get a lot of different variety on your images there. Cancel out of that. Go back to filter. Sharpener Pro 1 and 2. So this is a raw pre-sharpener, an output sharpener that you can run it through, Silver FX Pro, and Viveza. So a lot of options with Google Nick filters. In the last plugin that I want to discuss with you is actually Portrait Pro. So select an image. And when you use Portrait Pro, you'll want it to be on its own layer, so a duplicate layer. Uh, it needs to be a picture of the face of a person and once you have your layer selected you have the face go up to filter select anthropics portrait pro and it'll take a second to open and then it's going to search through looking for the faces on the image all right it's going to find the face you're going to select if it's male female boy or girl this is a female and we see before and after. Now, Portrait Pro does face sculpting. And unless you're doing things for commercial reasons, etc., we turn that off. And so using just this button right here, I can take the face sculpting off. Now, what you want to do, the first thing is you're going to go through and you're going to adjust these points on your image so that they correctly encompass the eyebrows, the nose, the mouth, the eyes, etc. And so it's okay if it goes over the hair a little bit. Down here, let's look at the mouth. See the lip needs to be expanded out a little bit. This one, it did a really good job. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more work on the image. All right, and so over to the left, we see our before. And on the right, we have our after. And Portrait Pro can be used to enhance an image. And a lot of times I've seen it overused and you can find that people begin to look a little bit plasticky. So you can click on the different drop-down sliders and we can see that she had beautiful skin to begin with. We've seen some great enhancement on her eyes, maybe a little over sharpening, but we'll get down there in a moment. Um, she doesn't have a lot of acne or anything, but we could adjust that slider if someone did. If she had under eye bags, we would go through and she's got a little bit, so we can lighten those up just a little. Crow's feet, not anything she has to worry about but you can go through and you can adjust each thing individually or you could go through and adjust it here. Now, I'm going to click the view after only and that makes it a little bit easier for us to just focus on the image here without the before. Skin lighting, you can actually go and adjust the light placement. You can adjust some of the cheekbone lighting to make them appear maybe a little more prominent. And for her eye lids, you can do what they call a smoky eye, and that just darkens up, makes it appear as if her makeup's a little bit darker. When you're happy with that one, you can come down to eye controls. I tend to brighten the iris and sharpen the eyes, but maybe not quite so much. You can whiten the eyes, expand the whitening area, clean up. If someone has bloodshot eyes, you can go in and clean that up. I like to sharpen the eyebrows 
just because they tend to get soft sometimes with the skin. You could go through and change the eye color and all of that. I don't really do those types of things. I use this to enhance, not so much change, what my images look like. Now for skin smoothing, you can go in and select the skin area. And see right here we see where it's over part of her hair. I'm going to cut back on that because I don't want the skin lightening and such to be happening over her hair. So I'm going to take that off of that area just using my brush. And the same brush shortcuts work here that exist in Photoshop. All right, now in these areas right here and around her nose, I have some areas I need to actually extend the skin on. So I'm going to come up under her eyes here. And then over here. here and for some reason it usually doesn't do a really good job around the nose so I find that I have to extend and paint that area in. When I'm done I click OK. Now for hair same thing I can go in and I want to show it where the hair is so I can paint on, and it's a very small brush. Let's make the brush a little bit larger. And so if you were changing her hair color, it would be really important that you have every strand selected and everything else. And you can change her hair color in this program. But that's not anything that we'll be doing. Just a quick demonstration. But you would go in and you would paint a mask over where her hair is. And it's going to be a lot darker in the center of your cursor and begin to fade out along the edges. All right. And so we'll pretend that's an amazing mask we know that there's still areas that needed to be addressed that were not. But when I'm ready, I click OK. And you can go over here and you could apply a slight tint or attempt to change a hair color. Sometimes it does a good job going from black to blonde probably not anything you would want to do. Okay? Shine is just going to enhance the highlights of the hair, lighten, fill in the shadows. Hair tidying is going to allow you to fill in some of the gaps and shadows. And so that lightens it up some in there. Smoothing just makes it softer. Yeah, actually remove some of the sharpening. Click OK when you're done. And you can actually go in and change skin tone and all of those things as well. Picture controls is another thing I leave off because when it comes to exposure and all those types of things, those are things that need to be taken care of in Camera Raw or using adjustment layers before you bring your picture in and do any Portrait Pro adjustments. When you're through, then you come up and you click Next and OK. But before that, I just wanted to point out to you that under the presets, you can go through and there are a lot of different presets that you can pre-select based on age and whether it's a male or a female. But when you're through, come up to Next and we're going to return from Plugin. If you had more than one person in the image, then instead of return from plugin, you would select the select other person option. And then you would adjust your points and go through and do your sliders. 
Now this will open in Photoshop and the changes will be made to the layer I had selected because Portrait Pro does not place its changes on a separate layer for you. Okay, so here it is with our changes. There's the before and here's the after. We can see that somehow face sculpting got turned back on because otherwise we would not see this movement. And so there's a lot of versatility and options out there that can be used to enhance your images. Once again, most of them do cost. Some of them can be pretty expensive, but some of them not so much. Portrait Pro, you can get for as cheap as $39, and that's in a standalone version that then you have to save and reopen in Photoshop, or for about $49 on sale using coupons, you can get the plug-in.